In today's video, I'm sharing with you my five top tips to get the very most out of this camera, the Blackmagic Studio Camera 4K Pro. And we won't mess around, let's dive straight in with tip number one, using presets. Think of presets as being able to hit save as on your camera's settings, and then very easily being able to recall those settings at the touch of a button whenever you need them. It's super useful for when you need to switch between different setups, or in situations like I am right now where you shoot in the same space every time, you can save a preset for that space, recall those settings so that you know the shot is gonna look exactly the same every single time. To set up the preset, you first need to set up your camera settings to exactly how you want them to be saved. And the preset will actually save everything from lens data, so aperture and shutter speed, to camera settings like resolution, frames per second. So get, make sure you've got everything set up exactly how you want it and your shot looking how you need it to. Then to actually save the preset, you need to go into the menu, navigate to the preset section of the menu, and then hit the plus icon at the bottom to create a new preset. Give it a name and then hit update. And once you've done that, your preset will be saved, ready for future use in the presets menu. Now to use this preset in the future, you just go back to the presets menu, tap on the preset that you created, and then hit the little tick icon and all your camera's settings will be restored to how they were saved in that preset. You can save as many presets as you like on the camera. For example, I've got two specific ones for this studio where I switch between shooting 50 frames per second and 25 frames per second. And it just makes it super easy to switch between the two without having to dial in all the other settings like iris, shutter speed, uh, even the frames per second. You can just click on a preset, click tick, and all those settings are instantly restored. Tip number two is function buttons because both of these new Blackmagic Studio cameras have three customizable function buttons on them that you can program to do a whole host of things. And it really does speed up your workflow because you can program them to trigger the things that you use the most. So for example, you could trigger a button to start and stop the recording or to turn on and off focus peaking. It depends what functions you use the most within the camera. Um, let me show you how to set it up and I'll show you how I've got mine set up as well so you can see what functions I use. So if you go to the settings menu and scroll along to the fourth page, you'll see an area to customize these function buttons. Starting off with my F1 button, I actually have this set to focus zoom. So whenever I press the F1 button on the side of the screen, you'll notice it punches in two times so I can just double check the focus. I can also move around on the screen as well to check different areas and I can even pinch the screen to increase that zoom and it really helps just making sure that my shot is in focus. My F2 button I've actually set as a physical start stop recording button. I find it easier than just tapping the screen because sometimes where I tap the screen it sort of starts and stops the recording. I, I tap twice basically. So to avoid any accidental taps I've set it to the physical F2 button. And F3 for me personally I've set it to focus assist because then I can use focus peaking and I've got the little dial on the side of the camera to decrease or increase the focus peaking as well. Um, but I've, I've set it to focus assist to just really double check that my shot is in focus. And those are the three functions I would say I use the most on the camera anyway. So it makes sense for me to assign them to the easy access customizable buttons that are just located on the side of the screen. But there are loads more functions that you can assign these buttons to depending on how you want your camera set up and the functions that you use the most. So for example, you've got triggering the autofocus or turning on and off a lot. You can use them to turn on things like frame guides or zebras, again, focus peaking like I've got. You can even, if you're using the studio camera as part of a live show, program one of the function buttons to be your push to talk button for your talk back. So I do highly recommend that if you've got one of these cameras or any Blackmagic camera really, you do take the time to dive into the function buttons menu and program them for the things that you use the most because it will really speed up your workflow. Tip number three is ATEM autofocus. In fact, the next two tips are gonna be for using the new studio cameras along with an ATEM switcher. And this first one is one I absolutely love. I use it every time I'm in my studio. And it's the ability to focus the camera out the touch of a button on the ATEM itself. It's super useful for situations like right now where you're doing everything yourself and you don't have a camera operator who can trigger the autofocus. 
having the ability to trigger it remotely through the ATEM without having someone behind the camera is incredibly helpful. There's two main ways to do it. If you've got an ATEM Mini Extreme like me, you've got a dedicated focus button above each HDMI input. And if you press and hold that focus button, it will trigger the autofocus in the corresponding camera. So my camera is plugged into input number two here. And if I press and hold the focus button now, you'll see there we go, it's triggered the autofocus within the camera. Now for non A10 Mini Extreme users, you unfortunately don't have a physical hardware button, but there is a button in the A10 software control that you can use to trigger the camera's autofocus. So just open up the A10 software control and then navigate over to the camera tab and you've got all of the cameras or all of the inputs for your ATEM there and if you just scroll along to the camera that you want on the bottom here there's this autofocus button and next to it is actually a focus wheel so if you need to adjust the focus granularly you can do that manually but if you click the focus button for the camera or the autofocus button it will trigger the autofocus within the camera the same as the physical button does on the ATEM Mini Extreme. Now just a quick note here if you are doing this with an SDI based ATEM switcher you will need the return SDI for this to work because that's where that ancillary data travels so you need both SDIs the one going from the camera to the switcher and then the return SDI from the switcher back to the camera. Tip number four, camera settings macros. Now one thing that I've done to actually speed up my process when using this camera with my ATEM switcher for live streaming is create a macro that automatically pushes all of the camera settings and color calibration to the camera at the push of one button. It's a bit like the presets feature that we spoke about earlier, except it also includes all of the color grading data from the ATEM as well. It makes it super easy to just turn on the camera and go live within seconds without having to mess around with all the color grading of the camera each time. So to set this up, we basically split it into two stages. The first being to get your camera and the shot looking exactly how you want it to and all the settings, how you need it a bit like we did for the presets, um, but also getting your color grade perfect as well. And then once you've done that, we'll save the settings and then create the macro that actually restore those settings each time you run the macro to your camera. So let me show you how to set this up. Now, the first thing you're gonna wanna do is go into the ATEM software control and navigate over to the camera tab and then select the camera of the settings that you want to change so my camera is plugged into camera uh, input number two so I'm actually just going to open up the color wheels a bit more because I'm going to change some of the, the camera settings like my camera settings right now I'm, f I'm I'm perfect with I don't need to change them but for this demo what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to make a black and white preset so I'm just going to drag down the saturation, but it's at this point that you'd get your color grade and your camera settings exactly how you want them to do. But as I say, for this demo, we've gone black and white. We've gone, uh, we've gone old school, but let's say this is the grade that I wanted for my live stream. Now you need to save out those settings. So you're just going to go to file, save as, and then uh, we'll call this black and white or black white and we'll save that to the desktop. Now the only thing that we want ticked here, so just select none up at the top, and then you're just gonna save the camera settings here, and then click save. And that will save that restore file. So we've saved the settings. Now we need to create the actual macro that we're gonna run each time we wanna restore these settings. So uh, go over to the switch tab, go to macros, click in an empty space to create the macro and give it a name. We're gonna call this black and white. and then hit record. At this point, what you're gonna do is go over to File, Restore, select that black and white file or the, the restore file that you just saved, hit Restore, and then hit Restore, the Restore button to actually restore those settings, and then stop the macro. And we've got that macro in there. So what I'm actually gonna do right now is I'm actually gonna restore my normal settings so that we can see this, this working. One little tip here, if you've got an A10 Mini Extreme and you save this macro into either slots one, two, three, four, five, or six of your macro, like I've done here, I've got slot number one as my Sigma settings, then you can actually use the physical button on your A10 Extreme to trigger the macro. So you'll see here when I click macro number one, it flips back my settings and then I actually do a little adjustment here on the gain. I boost the gain up a little bit to get back to my normal settings. Now I've put this in slot number, what are we, uh, nine. So I'm not going to, or eight, I think that might have been. Uh, I'm not going to have a physical button that I can press, but watch what happens. So I'm going to go to run. 
turn on my run and recall and I'm going to click this black and white button and then watch what happens to the, the settings here. There we go. We've now pushed all of the camera settings, but also the color grading settings to the camera. So there we go, it's that easy to do. And you can create as many of these macros that have different looks as you like. And it just means it's a super easy way that when you're using the camera with an ATEM switcher, that you can easily restore all of the camera settings and color grade to the camera quickly, ready for your live stream. Before I move on to the final top tips, let me talk to you about today's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creators. With topics like film and video, graphic design, illustration, photography, marketing, and many more, it's an amazing way to get started learning something new or grow your skills by learning from experts. So if you're looking to learn about animation, for example, then Jake Bartlett's Animating with Ease in After Effects course is the one for you. Or maybe you wanna up your YouTube game. If so, definitely check out Marquez Brownlee's YouTube success class. I'm taking it at the moment and have found it so useful when it comes to writing my scripts and planning out my videos. And I know many of you who watch my videos for black magic stuff are looking to learn more about DaVinci Resolve. Well, Skillshare has a number of classes for both color grading and editing that are perfect for beginners. Like this DaVinci 17 course from Mustafa Nassar. He's created short but detailed videos explaining each section of DaVinci and all of the effects and functions built into it. Skillshare is curated specifically for learning, meaning there's no ads and they're always launching new premium classes, so you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you. And because I've teamed up with Skillshare on this video, the first 1,000 people who use the link in my description will receive a one month free trial to Skillshare Premium so you can explore your creativity. Tip number five is LUTs. Now what happens if you wanna do what we were just talking about, but you don't have an ATEM switcher or you're using a different switcher, or you wanna create a very specific look and then take that into something like an Elgato cam link? Well, that's where LUTs come in. Think of it as a file that when you turn it on, it actually applies a color grade on top of your shot. And the beauty with the Blackmagic cameras is that when you load that file onto the camera, you can apply it to whatever output you want. So you could apply it just to the LCD monitor so that as the camera operator, you can see what the shot would look like with a color grade, but actually what's being recorded is the very flat version so that when it goes into post-production, the colorist has all the information that they need and the, the proper file to really create a nice color grade on top. Or if you're doing live work, you can actually select in the Blackmagic menu to send that LUT file to the LCD screen, but also out of the HDMI as well. So that is the version, let's say, the cam link receives with the color grade already applied. And that's exactly what you do for live streaming. So let me show you how I create and use a LUT. Now, the first thing you're going to need to do is just record a few seconds of footage from your camera without any LUTs applied. Then you're going to take this footage into DaVinci and start to tweak the color grade in the color tab a little and get the shot looking exactly how you want. I'm not going to go into depth about how to color grade with DaVinci in this video. I'll save that for a later video. Once you created the grade that you like, you can then export that as a LUT file from DaVinci. And to do that, it's super simple. You just right hand click on the little thumbnail of your grade and then click generate 3D LUT uh, cubed version. And that will save a file. You can then load that onto your USB-C drive that you plug into your camera and load it onto the camera itself. Then to use it, you just go into the LUTs menu, select the LUT that you've created, click the tick icon, and then you can go into the settings menu and actually select which monitor or which output you want the LUT applied to. Okay, so that's five, but I'm gonna throw in a bonus one. So tip number six is metadata. If you swipe in either direction on the back screen of these new studio cameras, it's actually gonna bring up the slate function. And it's really useful, it's a really useful function for entering in metadata, which is gonna make your life a lot easier when it comes to the edit and when you're bringing these large files into DaVinci for editing. Uh, so the slate actually is split up into two sections. There's the clips section and the project section. The clips allows you to 
enter in a whole bunch of data like what lens you were using, whether it's an interior or an exterior shot, whether it's day, night. Uh, and of course you can put the take and the scene as well as a really cool feature, which is if the last take you did was a good take, you can press the little good take button at the bottom and actually mark it as a good take. So that then when you import all of these files into DaVinci, you've got all of this metadata that you can search from and, and sort. But importantly, if you've used that good take feature, the editor can actually just filter out all the good takes and doesn't need to sort, sort of troll through all of the other takes. They just know which ones with a good one because you've marked it there and then. Also on the other page, on the project page, you can name or add other information like who was the camera op or who was the director. And of course you can change the name of the project as well as you're, as you're going along, uh, which is basically the file name of the recording. So I use this a lot. I find it a really good feature and it does definitely speed up your workflow when it comes to taking that footage off the camera and bring it into DaVinci. Uh, having that additional metadata to search from and filter out just really does speed things up. Of course, this does work best with DaVinci because they're both Blackmagic products. Um, so I'd recommend if you're a DaVinci user, really diving into this new slate or not new, but this slate function that is built into this camera as well as built into the Pocket Cinema cameras and I think the Ursas as well. So there you have it. It ended up being six top tips, but I'll let you have that last one for free. If you enjoyed the video, please do give it a thumbs up. That really helps. Also, if you're not yet subscribed, which by the way, 75% of you who watch my videos aren't, please do consider hitting the little subscribe button down below. That really, really does help and I really do appreciate it. If you've got any questions or comments, put them down in the comments below. I read through all of them and I will reply to as many of them as possible. And also, if you need help with your setup and you want to book in a one-to-one -one session, my email address is on screen below. You can just ping me an email. We'll get that set up. Maybe you've just got one of these new Blackmagic Studio cameras and you need help getting it working with your workflow. We can get that booked in and getting everything working how it should. Once you've done all that, guys, I will see you on the next video.